Hello, and welcome to the Nutrition Diva podcast. I'm your host, Monica Reinagel, and this week we're talking about protein bars. What are they good for, and what should you look for when choosing one? But first, dreaming of a beach vacation? Get away to the sugar white sands and turquoise waters of Panama City Beach, Florida. You'll discover endless family fun, heart pounding thrills, eco adventure, and romance. So make it memorable and make it yours at Panama City Beach, the real fun beach. Plan your escape today at visitpanamacitybeach.com. Karen asks Are protein bars healthy or are they just glorified candy bars? Well, this category has absolutely exploded. My local grocery store, and I'm talking about the regular grocery, not the fancy healthy food store, they now have devoted an entire aisle to these bars. There are scores of choices, and it seems like new brands appear weekly. So instead of reviewing or ranking specific brands, Let me instead offer you a guide as to what sort of things you might want to look for or avoid when choosing a protein bar. But first, I want to draw a distinction between a protein bar and an energy bar. These terms are often used interchangeably to refer to any bar-shaped item that's not an actual candy bar. And to be honest, these terms don't have any strict definitions, but I think of energy bars as being relatively high in carbohydrates. Energy bars were originally designed to provide a portable source of calories or energy to fuel physical exertion or exercise. Carbohydrates are more quickly absorbed than fats and proteins, which take longer to digest. In fact, the simpler the carbohydrate, the faster it will be available to your muscles. And another word for simple carbohydrate is sugar. So in order to provide quick energy during extended exercise, an energy bar is going to be high in sugar. The rest of the time, however, we're usually trying to limit the simple sugars and emphasize complex carbohydrates instead. So an energy bar isn't a great choice as a meal replacement. Protein bars, on the other hand, are usually lower in carbohydrates and higher in protein. Although this makes them less useful as a quick source of energy during exercise, it makes them a better choice to replace a meal or snack. Protein helps to build and maintain strong muscles and bones, and after a hard workout, a combination of protein and carbohydrates can help you recover more quickly. And because it is more slowly digested and absorbed, protein also helps to regulate blood sugar and appetite. If you need a meal or a snack, Real food would always be preferable to a highly processed bar, but if real food simply isn't available, a protein bar would be a better choice than an energy bar. Now, before we get into what to look for when choosing a protein bar, let me pause to thank this week's sponsors. We received support this week from HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit, delivering easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. Each box includes everything you need to get an incredible meal on the table in about 30 minutes. And there's something for everyone, including family recipes, calorie smart options, vegetarian, and fun menu series like the Hall of Fame and Kraft Burgers and you can easily change your delivery day or skip a week anytime. Break out of your dinner rut with HelloFresh's seasonal chef-curated recipes and say goodbye to those endless grocery store trips and takeout. With HelloFresh, I get really delicious meals that I would never take the time to make from scratch after a busy work day. Tonight, for example, we're having salsa verde enchiladas with black beans and poblano peppers. I can't wait. For $80 off your first month, of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Diva80 and then enter that code Diva80. That's like receiving eight meals free. So that's HelloFresh.com slash Diva80 and the code is Diva80. Today's episode was also supported by Honest Tea. Honest Tea is a brand that doesn't only make delicious organic teas and beverages, they also make a difference around the world. For every fair trade certified product Honest sells, they give back a premium to a community development fund located at the ingredient's origin. 
And then the farmers decide together how to spend their funds to improve their lives. These funds go toward vital resources like clean water, schools, health care, and transportation. And that's why the small choice of what to drink can mean a lot to a lot of people. I've always enjoyed Honest Tea's product line, but I never knew that they were also doing so much good in the world. And I'm glad to support a company that gives back to the communities that need help the most. Visit honesttea.com slash podcast to learn more about Honest and how your small decision has a big impact. And now let's talk about what to look for when selecting a protein bar. Because as I said earlier, you have a lot of options to choose from. So here are some of the things to consider when checking out those nutrition facts labels and ingredient lists. Number one, how much protein is in it? The amount of protein in a typical protein bar ranges from 10 to 30 grams. Now, if you're using this bar as a snack, 10 to 15 grams of protein would be fine. And if it is just a snack, try to keep that total calorie count under 200. But if this bar is intended to replace an entire meal, well then look for one that contains at least 20 grams of protein. And if you're really trying to maximize the muscle building benefits, aim for more like 25 grams of protein. Number two, what kind of protein is in it? Typical protein sources for bars include whey, egg white, soy, pea, hemp, and other vegetarian sources. Now, in terms of protein quality and muscle building benefit, whey and egg white are going to be your best choices. If you prefer to avoid animal sources, then soy would be your next best option in terms of protein quality. And if you don't consume soy, then really any of the other vegetarian proteins would be fine. Number three, what is it sweetened with? Even though protein bars are formulated to take the place of a meal, they don't make protein bars in flavors like salmon and broccoli or steak and potatoes or red beans and rice. Instead, we get meal replacement bars that taste like chocolate brownie sundae, peanut butter cups, or cherry cheesecake. So the question is, what are they sweetening it with? You'll find bars sweetened with honey, coconut sugar, agave, brown rice syrup, dates, or any number of other ingredients. Don't get too caught up in the health halo surrounding these so-called natural sweeteners. Flip that bar over and see how many grams of sugar it contains. You'd want to count that toward your added sugar allowance, which is, in case you forgot, about 25 grams per day. Now, if this bar is catering to low-carb or keto diet enthusiasts, then it's probably sweetened with artificial sweeteners like sucralose or aspartame, or more natural low-calorie sweeteners like stevia or monk fruit, or it might be sugar alcohols like sorbitol or erythritol, or a combination of these. Now, none of these are perfect for reasons that I've explored in past episodes. The artificial sweeteners may have a negative impact on gut bacteria. Stevia and monk fruit, well, they taste a little funny. And sugar alcohols can cause some mild digestive distress. Of all of these, I think I'd lean toward monk fruit and sugar alcohols. But I still recommend consuming these sugar-free foods with the same degree of moderation as you would foods that contain actual sugar. Number four, how many calories does it contain? The calories range from around 150 to almost 400 per bar. And regardless of whether those calories are coming from protein, carbohydrate, sugar, or fat, they need to fit into your food budget for the day. Now, calorie needs can range from 1,500 to 3,000 calories a day, depending on your size, your body composition, and your activity level. So when you're choosing a bar, consider your total calorie needs and what portion of your calories this bar is going to replace. As a general rule, a full-sized meal should provide 25 to 35% of your calories for the day. A snack should be closer to 10% of your daily calories. And remember, snacks are totally optional. And number five, what else is in there? Once you've selected a bar that has the amount and the type of protein that you want, the right number of calories, and your preferred sweetener, Take a look at that ingredient list to see what else is in there. Don't be too dazzled by functional ingredients like adaptogens, fancy fatty acids, herbal extracts, or added vitamins and minerals. 
Most of these are either superfluous, unnecessary, or they're included in quantities that are too small to really have any benefit. On the other hand, a long list of chemicals and additives is a sign of a highly processed food. Ingredient lists should read more like a recipe and less like a chemistry lab assignment. When it comes to protein bars, you have a lot of choices, and hopefully this guide can help steer you towards bars that meet your needs. But protein bars are never going to be an ideal form of nutrition. Choose your protein bars well, but try to save them for those times when real food is truly not an option. Stuck on a plane for six hours with nothing but stale pretzels? Forced to spend your entire lunch break at the DMV to renew your driver's license? Lunch was early and dinner will be delayed? Those might be times when a protein bar would come in super handy. But you don't have to eat a protein bar the minute you finish working out in order to maximize the benefit of your workout. And for that matter, you don't have to carry bars around with you so that you can eat one the moment you notice that you might be starting to get a little hungry. Your metabolism will not shut down if you go an hour without food in your stomach. In both cases, if real food will be available in the not-too-distant future, it's perfectly fine to wait. I hope you enjoyed today's topic. You'll find a transcript along with links to loads of related episodes in our archives at quickanddirtytips.com, where you can also sign up for my free newsletter. And if you'd like to learn more about my nutrition groups and programs, head on over to nutritionovereasy.com, where you can sign up for updates and special offers. I'll be back next week with registered dietitian, nutritionist, Melissa Mitri, to talk about the five nutrients that every new mother needs to enhance her postpartum recovery and her baby's nutrition. Our show is produced by Nathan Sems, edited by Karen Hertzberg. Our advertising manager is Michelle Margulis. Morgan Ratner is in charge of audience development. Emily Miller is our marketing assistant. Mikaela Prell is our awesome intern. And our director is Kathy Doyle. Thanks to our sponsors for their support, and thanks to you for listening. Have a great week.